So your budget is tight and you need to keep marketing without spending the big bucks. So I've got some low cost ways to help you build your sales and your audience. Number one, and this is number one for a reason, is conduct a survey. The first step in developing a marketing plan is understanding who your target customers are and what they want from your company. So you always, 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 always want to start your marketing with research. So there's no point in putting together a marketing plan and throwing money at the problem if you don't really understand who your people are, how to talk to them and what they want, right? Or what they need. So you can use resources like surveymonkey.com if you want to, you know, get fancy, you want to do a really formal survey. You can use Instagram stories. You can do a poll on Instagram stories. You could do a poll on Facebook, but really start with doing some research and conducting a survey. Before you can get better results from your marketing, you need to get better information on what to say, what they need, what they want. And here's the thing. A lot of your best ideas are going to come from your customers. So ask them. They're such a great resource. Okay. So that's number one, take a survey. Number two is to take special care of your existing customers. You know, it's typically five times as expensive to make a sale to a new customer as it is to make a sale to an existing one. So a very quick way to grow your sales is to look at your existing customers and really take care of them. You want to wow them. You want them to become raving fans so that they're referring new customers to you and you want them to keep buying from you, right? You want them to stick around. So things like small gifts, handwritten cards, follow-up calls, special invitations, sneak previews. Those are all low cost options that will make your existing customers raving fans and make them feel really special. Just think about how you can deliver the wow to them. You know, think about customer service moments that you've experienced and that wowed you. So things like unexpected free gifts in the box when you order, when you order something and the package comes, I love it when that happens. And it can be little free samples. It can be stickers sometimes. It's just something you didn't expect. It's kind of cool. You got it in the box when the box arrived. Things like employees remembering your names or your preferences for something. You know, when you go check in at a hotel and they know what kind of pillows you like to have, you know, there's some hotel chains that do that. So what are the ways in your business? that you can wow your customers with little simple touches like that. So that's number two. Number three, maximize your online marketing. So you can build relationships with prospective customers by offering them high quality content on your site. Things like blogs, how-to articles, videos, newsletters. Creating content has dozens of benefits, not the least of which is positioning you as the expert but it also optimizes your SEO, it creates trust, it creates value for your audience. And there's so many different kinds of content that you can, you can choose from. So you can really choose what works for you and what you're comfortable with. But if you wanna be a leader in your space, you need to provide valuable content. So look at what you can provide to your audience as far as content and use that. Use that to draw them in, use that as a lead magnet to get their email addresses so that you can continue to market and sell to them and build that relationship with them but really start thinking about what content you can create. Number four, this is what a lot of people miss. Use all your real estate. So, and we could be talking about physical real estate. We could be talking about virtual real estate. So for signs, uh, for marketing, use, if you've, if you've got a physical location, use your building, use surrounding land, vehicles, sidewalks, great places to put up signs and banners, right? You could put a, a sign on your car, or you could put a sign on the side of the building. If you have a physical location, you could use counter mats, you know, the point of, uh, point of purchase signage to market whatever it is that your promotion is. If you don't have a brick and mortar location, think about your virtual real estate. So are you using pop-ups on your site or, or banners at the top of your homepage to show your most urgent offers? Are you linking your offers on each page in your bio or from your podcast to your website or vice versa? Make sure that you have all of those links working. And then if somebody is on one part of your real estate, that they're going to be led to the other part that you want to get them to, right? Think about your social media. Are your social media posts linking to your offers and to your site? You should have a call to action on every single social media post. And it's not always buy. It might not be buy. It might be go check out this blog or here's this great resource, whatever it is. So make sure that all of that is leading to where you want them to go make sure that it's maximized. Number five, I love this one. And we just did a, a podcast episode on this is public relations. You want bang for your buck or no bucks, actually, in most cases, 
This is a great one that is free or nearly free. And the impact that PR can have on your business is outstanding. It's, it's free and it's, it's extremely effective. PR means public relations, but basically it's unpaid exposure in the media. If you subscribe to One Step Empire podcast, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, One Step Empire. And if you subscribe, then it'll pin you when the new episode comes out. But Gloria Chow is our PR expert on the show. And she explains PR this way on the podcast, and it really makes the power of PR so clear. Think of it this way, bear with me. If, if a man takes a woman out on a date, and while they're out, he tells her what a great guy he is. He has a great job. He has a great family, all of those things. That's marketing, right? He's saying the right things to the right people. But if after the date, she goes home and she's talking to her best friend and tells her about the date and her friend's like, oh my gosh, I know that guy. He volunteers at the hospital. He's so funny. He's really kind. He's just an amazing human. That's PR. That's a trusted source vouching for you. That's the difference, right? So PR is incredibly powerful. Now, the thing is, it feels intimidating because it feels like you have to be a big shot to, to pitch to these magazines, but you don't. They don't care about you and all the things you've done before. What they care about is your perspective and you can absolutely get featured, especially if you've got any kind of point of view and we all have a point of view about your space and you pitch it to them the right way. So make sure you watch that podcast or listen to that podcast and it'll give you all the tips on how to write the pitch and how to find the people to pitch to. So get PR on your schedule and just make time to do it because it's so powerful. So that was number five. Number six is collaboration. You can partner up with another business and help promote each other's services. So for example, if you're running a restaurant, you could offer local businesses in your area discount coupons or free items from the menu, right? In return for advertising space on their premises. Maybe they give out your flyers for your restaurant. Again, what you offer and, and what you get in return is gonna vary depending on what your business is, but make sure that you're looking at businesses that your potential customers are going to frequent. Or if you're online, make sure you're sharing the same audience. So maybe partnering, maybe a makeup brand, partnering with a fashion brand, would make sense, right? You're, you, you're not, you don't have competing merchandise or products, but you do share an audience, okay? So that is number six, <coughs> excuse me. Number seven is to build a referral program. You know, the best forms of marketing are those that you can set up, you can turn on and they'll just grow organically, automatically without too much effort. A referral program doesn't work for every business, but it's worth a try if it's one that, that you think will work for yours, because it really is something that's just, you can almost set it and forget it and build your business. So look at a referral program. And that could be a program with partners referring their audience to you and maybe getting a commission. It can be a referral program internally with your own customers. If you have some great clients and you want them to refer more great clients to you, how do you reward them? How do you encourage that? So think about that. Number eight is turning your employees into ambassadors. So your employees are part of the community. They have all sorts of contacts that you don't have that could help you. So how about inviting employees or their extended families to a fun event at your business or engage them in a referral program, right? Anything, your, your employees have tentacles out into the community that you can take advantage of, that you can you know use for your business. So turn them into ambassadors for your company. And number nine is to run a contest. This is old as the hills, but it still works. Online, in-person contacts, there's uh, contests are still a great way to get a low cost marketing publicity. So you can give away, you know, iPads, cash prizes, merchandise. It's a great way to get some, you know, viral potential and improve your brand's image. You can also contribute to other raffles, you know, things like door prizes, for example. If the audience for that particular raffle or contest matches your target market, then it's a great way to get in front of them for a very low cost. It could be merchandise you already have on hand or a service that you offer, and it gives you exposure to a whole new audience. So think about how you can use contests as well. Number 10, guest blog or social media takeovers. Again, this is sharing someone else's audience. So you want to do this with somebody who has the same target market you do, but again, non-competing services or products, 
And you can guest post on their blog. You can do a social media takeover. You could take over their social media for a day. So you have access to their audience and you could let them do the same with your audience. It's a great way to really quickly grow your audience, right? Get more people in less time. So you can create a, you know, a killer article. You may be invited to contribute more, right? It's going to give you more exposure. It's going to give you backlinks to your site. There's so many benefits to that. So think about that, finding somebody that al aligns with your brand and has a similar audience. Number 11 is to give back, which is just great on its own, but by sponsoring a sports team or you know participating in a charity drive, you're doing a part for the community, but you're also generating goodwill with customers and prospects. So think about what causes you're passionate about, what causes align with your message or with your business in general, what causes or community are important to your ideal clients. Get aligned with a cause, support them, and then make sure that you maximize the opportunities that come with it, right? You're doing a great thing, you feel good, you also get more eyes on your business. So it's, it's a wonderful win-win-win for everybody. All right, so give back, number 11. Number 12, apply for business awards. We don't do this enough. You know, as women, we tend to shy away from asking for recognition, even when it's well-earned and possibly overdue. Many of us think that we, we don't need the validation, right? We don't do what we do for the accolades. Well, you may not need that kind of personal validation and rec recognition, but your business does, and it will benefit from it immensely. So you want to be finding awards for your particular industry, for your particular area, for women in business, whatever it happens to be, and apply for them. If you win an award, there will be announcements from the organization that's running the competition, right? There's possibly ceremonies where your company name is, you know, put out there where it's discussed. Even if you don't win, but you're shortlisted, you're still going to get some kind of exposure out of the process. So there's actually a blog post on our site. If you go to shecorporated.com, there's a blog post there about winning awards and, and applying for awards. It's got more ideas on where you can go to apply for different awards, how to find that. If you go to shecorporated.com, you can click on that blog. All right, number 13, this is the last one we'll do today, is to join face-to-face -face networking groups. Networking is key. You know, after all, it's the, it's the fastest, easiest, and most effective way to build a meaningful relationship to grow your business. And a strong network creates a constant flow of ideas, uh, collaboration opportunities, and support. So if you haven't already, go to chamber of commerce in your area, right? Women in business organizations. Maybe there's industry events for your particular industry. Join those face-to-face -face networking groups. You can also use apps like Meetup to find upcoming networking events in your area. And you know what, if it doesn't exist, you can create it. If there's no group out there for your area or your expertise or whatever it happens to be and you want one, create it. You can do that now. 